Yo and hello, everybody. Mike here, baseball collector. Happy Sunday. Uh, Sunday's a fun day for me to get home because usually I'm out at the ranch and I get back usually Sunday mid-afternoon sometime and I'll usually have a couple of days worth of mail and it's just fun to get home and open it all up. Uh, I did get a few cards I'm going to show off here in a minute. Stuff for the PC, but I just wanted to come on here and a, talk about a few things and B, do my uh, spin the wheel of names for the contest that I ran. Uh, it expired yesterday, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, remember the winner of that will get three slabs out of my collection, out of my extra stuff that they'll get to choose from. Huge response, by the way. I'll talk about that in a minute. These are all the to go multiple sides on pages and hopefully I got everybody you know it is what it is but college football was insane yesterday lots of great matchups Alabama Tennessee uh I, I'm one who likes I, I like the underdog I, I don't like seeing the same three four five different schools being considered for the national championship every single year it gets very boring very quickly especially for a guy who's a fan of a school that rarely is in the conversation. There, there's been times over the last 15, 20 years where TCU has been relevant, uh, but it doesn't mean they really have a chance to go to the national championship, even though this year they just beat Oklahoma State yesterday in a thrilling comeback overtime, double overtime, technically victory. Uh, they're really not in the, they could run the table and they won't get in the college football playoff because it's so skewed towards just a few schools. Uh, and it, I'm glad they're expanding the playoffs. I'm looking for, I want expanded college football playoffs. I think it, you know, you, you can't make it March madness, but you can give some of the little schools more of a shot. Uh, and TC is definitely a little school in a big conference, but in a conference that, you know, again, if Oklahoma was running the table, they'd be ranked higher. If Texas was running the table, they'd be ranked higher. This is just me being sour grapes. I'm, I'm not going to deny it. But seeing Alabama lose yesterday, even though I have lots of friends that love Alabama, they've won enough national titles, you know. And But now you've got Clemson, Michigan, Georgia, who just won last year. Like, I'm just saying, I'd love to see Tennessee get a shot, who hasn't had a title since, what, 98? Uh, what was that Peyton? No, it wasn't even Peyton. Peyton was already gone. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, I just like seeing parody. Uh, Cowboys Eagles play tonight. Yikes. Uh, don't know how that's going to go. It doesn't look like Dax playing quarterback. By the time you're watching this, if you're watching it later, that game will already be either going on or over. If you watch it tomorrow, Monday, you for sure will know the result and you'll know if I'm either happy or sad. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Uh, the Eagles are good. You know, Jalen Hurts is playing well. So who knows? Our defense is pretty crushing, but I don't know. We'll see. That will play out. I Speaking of Philadelphia, the, the baseball playoffs have just been unbelievably cool. Uh, I, again, I love seeing the lower seeds win. I love seeing the Phillies beat the Braves. The Braves won last year. Let somebody else win. And if you're a Braves fan, I know you're like, no, we want to win every year. Well, come on. Uh, that's why I hate Yankees fans so much. They're like, we want to win. Like, you've won 27 world titles. Let somebody else take one. Like, it's okay. Uh, the Dodgers lost, who was my pick to win the World Series. So they are out. Uh, now, it, the Strohs, I mean, the... Yanks are in a dogfight against the Guardians. The, sorry, against the Indians. It'll never be the Guardians. The Indians. They're playing the Cleveland Indians. Uh, so that's good. that's a great series. They play game four tonight uh, with the Indians having a chance to close it out. That would be crazy. But the Yanks have Garrett Cole on the hill. That, that should be... Anyway, I just love this. And... and Hockey season has started, which sounds crazy. I, I do love following the stars and what's going on with them and the Mavericks. Like, I'm a sports guy. I love sports. I love the competitiveness. I love seeing the teams that I cheer for do well. I love seeing other teams that uh, just, I love seeing what happens. It's just fun. 
So going from the elation of a TCU victory and, and how football's going and all this fun stuff. And then I get the news the other day that Bruce Suter passed away. And that's, you know, you always hate, look, none of us are getting out of this alive. So we're all going to die someday, but it's no fun. You know, when you lose a hall of famer, uh, on Bruce Suter, very underappreciated for what he was in his era. I remember watching him and dominating him and Goose Gossage and Raleigh Fingers, these guys that are that were more than just, you know, ninth inning specialists. They were relievers, but they were uh, closer fit for them. Lee Smith, same vein, you know. Uh, so Bruce Suter was a great player, Hall of Famer, obviously. Uh, I was missing two cards for his complete tops run. And so as soon as I heard that he passed away, I went and bought them and I way overpaid for them and don't care. I just wanted to get them, just finish that out. And once I get those in, I'll be able to do a showcase of his career in cardboard, which I just enjoy doing so much, pulling out of the cards, looking at them, seeing the career go together and, and all of that. But the other sad note is that his autograph had been getting really shaky. I, I haven't heard or read anything about, you know, I know he had been sick and stuff, but I don't really know the circumstances of his death. But uh, I had a private signing out to him. So between the the Smoltz thing not getting done right and Spruce Suter, I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be doing private signings. Maybe I'm, you know, I don't know. Uh, so that's coming back. I mean, it is what it is. Obviously, him dying is a way bigger deal than me getting an autograph back. That's for darn sure. Uh, but it's uh, so I'll be getting that back, getting a refund, all that. I've already talked with the guy and everything. So that's, you know, is what it is. So, yeah, let's uh, what I'll do first is turn this around, show you some pickups that came in, and then we'll run the wheel of names to see who wins the graded cards from the contest. So hang on one second. All right, here's just a bunch of stuff, uh, all stuff just for, again, different projects. I'll explain as I show the cards. Uh, first up, one guy had a bunch of these 89 upper deck uh, slabs that I want, wanted, needed, wanted, whatever. Uh, Roberto Alomar here, Mint 9. This is a 89 upper deck with such a revolutionary set, and I'm trying to get all the Hall of Famers that were in that set, and there's a bunch of them. And I'm trying to get them all in a Mint 9 because... These are white border cards, not that hard to grade. The and and what's great is these are getting cheap again. Like these were, this was like ten or eleven dollars, eleven maybe, probably eleven bucks, and free shipping. So it's like, that's great, you know. Um, and that's makes sense. I mean, these aren't expensive cards, so the fact that these are getting more reasonable is is good. And I think that's a trend that will only continue over the next six to twelve months. Like I said, he had several. I got the Paul Molitor as well. The The simple photography of 89 Upper Deck. I love that there's another picture on the back, usually an action shot of some kind. Paul Molitor there, Mint 9. Uh, then I got Carlton Fisk. So I'm not quite halfway through. Uh, this is just one of those things I go look on randomly. And that's, you know, what's cool is it might be two or three months before and I'll Oh, what 89 upper decks do I need? And I'll, and I'll go in and start hunting around for which ones I need and see if there's any kind of new listings and stuff. Another groundbreaking set, in my opinion, from my childhood that I love that I'm doing a Hall of Famer run on is this one, 84 Donruss. And so these I'm getting in eights or nines is kind of the deal. I mean, the I don't may have a 10 in there somewhere, but it's I'm not certainly not trying to get 10s, only if the price is right. But Sandberg... Second year Sandberg didn't have this card yet, uh, so added that to the 84 Donruss run. I'm much closer on this set than I am the 89 upper deck, but all of which are, are being worked on over time. Next two cards are part of my four decade set, getting cards of every Hall of Famer that's pictured on a Topps or Bowman card from 1950 to 1989. 71 Topps, Luis Aparicio here. 71, obviously, uh, a lot of people love it or hate it. Everything I hate about tops is is this, you know, the whole airbrush thing, the laziness of not getting current pictures of teams. It, it's annoying. 
And then another super, like this was a Ricky auction. I paid the Ricky tax on this card. Uh, Ricky Probstein, Rick Probstein. The Ricky tax is what we say when you buy a Probstein card, you're going to pay more than you would probably under any other seller just because they more eyeballs and more people. But this slab, and I didn't notice this or else I probably wouldn't have even bid on this, is this part right here. You'll notice that this was slabbed, you can tell by the serial number, this was slabbed during, you know, recently, relatively recently. And I think PSA had some supply issues and they ran out of regular holders. So a card should normally be, have the borders all around it where there's no, you know, excess. The card doesn't slide around. Well, I think that PSA ran out and they ended up using cards from, you know, the early you know, mid fifties cards that this would be, this would be great for a 54 Bowman card or 56 tops, but it's not so great for a 71 tops, a standard size card. So you end up getting these gaps, which is just lazy, annoying. I'd rather the card take longer and it be holdered right than quicker and holded wrong. So I don't know how you guys feel about it, but that just annoys the piss out of me. And not a lot I can do about it other than sell this one and maybe buy another one. But I got plenty of other stuff to worry about. This is first world problems, so not the end of the world. And the last card for the four decade set that I got that is holdered correctly, mind you, is this 1963 Topps World Series Game 1, picturing Whitey Ford, Hall of Famer. So... Again, any card with a Hall of Famer, which usually, other than the, you know, classic stadium team cards that are just the whole teams there, unless it pictures a manager that's separately or, or included in the photo. I have a bunch of those of Hall of Famers with that. But World Series cards, yep, we'll do those too. So love that. Um, the la and the last pickup I had was a, new Perez steel that I got and that's this one right here I'll try to scan back a little so this is the Perez steel great moment set and I think there's a lot of people that see this and don't realize it's more like a cabinet card I mean it's a big card it's it's uh I don't know six by eight something like that I, I don't know the exact dimensions but this is Mr. Frank Robinson I didn't have this one yet uh, and I got, this is one of those, I got an offer from the seller and I was like, oh, okay, that's good enough. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, not, not this, but all of these cards <laughs> that I have here were bought with eBay bucks. So eBay bucks just expired, you know, or not expired, but you got your new allocation on October 1st. And so that allowed me to add all of these collection or cards to my collection with no money out of my pocket. These were all eBay bucks purchases. So I ended up having a little over a hundred dollars in eBay bucks just cause I typically will save things up that I want to buy and spend more money when there's eBay bucks, which is their whole point, right? I mean, they're trying to entice people. Hey, we'll give you this. If you buy this, well, I just keep stuff in my watch list. And if an eBay bucks promotion comes along, then great. I, I think there's a lot of people that do that, but the Frank Robinson was not part of that. It was just, because I saw it and got an offer and and bought it. So that's, I love that. These are so cool. I, I, look at that compared to a regular slab. It's much, much larger. So, all right, let's, let's do a wheel of names. Let's give some cards away. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll spin the wheel of names. You can actually, uh, you'll, I'll pan the camera around and you will just point it at the computer. I've never done it this way. So hopefully this works. Uh, we ended up having... 54 people enter the contest, of which 51 are are in the drawing. Three guys said, I don't want to be in the drawing, but I wanted to do my pet peeves. Thank you so much to everybody for participating. It was great to watch all the videos. So many common threads through that of people. I mean, we all kind of dislike the same things. It's not like, uh, you know, the, the things that most irritate most people kind of irritate all people. And you know, packaging and eBay, certain things about eBay and the card grading companies and you name it. So uh, 
it, it was great just to see. And I hope that gave you an outlet to vent in a safe place where you could just kind of let it out. It wasn't meant to be a negative video or, or really anything other than just allowing people to, Hey, I think I share this with you guys. Why don't y'all put a video up? So here we go. Let's go to the wheel of names here. Oh, all right. Uh, this is me shooting video of my screen, so it's gonna probably look weird, but here's all 51 people that entered. And what I'm gonna do is shuffle this three times, spin it, and whoever does it will win three. In the original video, I showed a bunch of extra slabs that I have. I'm gonna, you know, give three of those of their choice. I'll email you or get in touch with me if I don't know who it is that wins. One, two, three shuffles. And yeah, let's spin. Good luck to everybody. Bam. And if I missed you, it wasn't on purpose, I promise. And the winner is, <laughs> looks like John Wade Boggs fan is the winner. Congratulations, John. See, they clapped for you even on the video. Uh, that is awesome. John, I do know how to get a hold of you and I will get in touch and see which card you want. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for participating. I'll catch you guys later this week. Keep collecting.